I don't know. Was it on? Yeah. Just now? Ready? Yeah. All right. I'd like to call the Ordinance Committee meeting to order for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2015. Um, attendance is Councillor Vice Chair Katerina, uh, Councillor Blaze, Town Manager Tom Hall, and Tracy Cool is here as our secretary, and I am Councillor St. Clair. I am the chair of the Ordinance Committee. Approval of the minutes from April 21st. Do I have a motion? Move so approval. <laughs> Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Great. Item number four, uh, discussion on parking at Pine Point. Um, want me to start? Are you want to start? Or? Go right ahead and I'll fill in the yeah. Um, so we actually had a couple complaints about some parking down at Pine Point. Um, there were some safety concerns. There were some concerns that um, the clam bake was sort of taking some hits when there was an overflow issue. They have a rather large parking lot. Um, and so what we decided to do was pull together all of the property owners from down there of the businesses to try to get a feeling from them as to um, how they felt about the parking situation, um, mostly the clam bake because they were really, honestly, the ones taking the hit. Um, we had a meeting with them a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Everybody uh, it was very <coughs> impressive. I was, it was really nice to see. Uh, all the owners showed up. I would say there was probably like five. five. Mm -hmm. um, and they all basically came to the same consensus at this point was to leave it the way it was, which was somewhat surprising to me because that doesn't usually happen. Um, there's some things that are going to be changing down there, and for us to make any major changes at this point would probably – not really be helpful. Um, the bridge is going to be worked on. There's going to be some work down on um, East, East Grand Ave. Grand Ave. East Grand, East Grand, East Grand, East Grand yep. Ave. Um, and so for us to make any major changes down there at this point, I think that they decided that they'd rather take the year and really look at what was happening down there and get a better feel for it before we make any major changes. Um, did I have I forgotten anything, Tom? Do you want to add? Uh, a couple other things. Uh, so the town is looking at doing a more comprehensive uh, set of improvements on East Grand, and we actually have monies for right. the improvement of this lower stretch of Pine Point Road. So, and, and we've actually conv convinced the funding agencies to hold that back a year Perfect. so we can get a better sense and, and maybe uh, come up with a more <coughs> um, comprehensive plan. Uh, the other thing that we've initiated, uh, and the results are are due very shortly. We've done a speed study, so oh, we get a sense of uh, whether the traffic, excuse me, the speed limit is appropriate. Right. So we'll be reporting those results to this committee in the coming weeks. And we've also, uh, though we've not lined any spaces, we've defined uh, spaces, kind of bookends, if you will, to make sure that cars don't park too close to the driveway openings uh, to the businesses. So uh, that's kind of the interim solution. Right. And I think it does make sense to spend some time better understanding yeah. and coming up with a more comprehensive approach. And part of um, what, one thing that we ordered, just to give a little bit more explanation, was that speed study. We're doing a speed The police department has set up a speed study down there. Um, one thing that we had sort of talked about with the business owners is if we can slow down some of the speed down there, it may actually help with the safety issues that some people are having. Um, we kind of joke that you can't kind of come over that hill and you see the, you see the ocean and people just make a beeline for it. Um, so we're hoping maybe if we can slow that down a little bit, it will help with some of the traffic issues. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, you know, this uh, section of road is actually fairly healthy. It's mm -hmm. going to pave shoulder uh, on the on the uh, side of, of the landing, I guess I'll call it. Yeah. It's actually a full um, six to seven foot paved shoulder, which is surprising. Most most sections of road in town don't have that. Right. Um, so it's not uh, an immediate safety issue in that regard until we can get a better sense of what the right. next step is. Okay. Um, before I open it up, do you guys have any questions? I don't, other than to say, you know, thank you for taking the time to meet with those business owners. And uh, I think it's helpful to know that there are some bigger changes going on. So to me, it doesn't make much sense to make any changes at the moment until we see what's yeah. going on with construction and whatever. So. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Okay. <coughs> um, I'm gonna, is there anyone in the audience that has any quick questions about this issue? I know a lot of you are here for a different issue, but does anyone have any questions about Pine Point? No. Okay, we're moving on. 
Uh, item number five, report on the parking at Higgins Beach from myself. So um, I want to, for those of you that weren't here, I want to give a brief um, background, quick, a quick background. Um, at our last meeting, there was a proposal on the table to um, change some of the parking situation or change the parking situation down at Higgins Beach. Um, it was defeated on this level, so meaning it did not, would not have gone any further, it would not have gone to the council for the council to vote on it. At that time, there was some, some frustrations from some people in the audience, so I thought that by forming a group of people um, that lived down there, we could maybe come together with <coughs> some other organizations and possibly come up with some, some solutions that could come back to this that might actually be able to be passed. Um, that did not happen. Um, we had two meetings. Thank you. Um, we had the chief of police there. Um, there was definitely some frustrations. There were definitely two different sides. Um, after our second meeting, I felt very strongly that we were not going anywhere. Um, I will admit that I was frustrated. Um, and so what I chose, and, and some of the people that were part of the group also chose, was that this was not a productive way for us to continue. Um, that being said, um, when I reported back to this group that I did not feel like this was the way to go, um, Councillor Blaze asked if he could present um, an, uh, an, a proposal that he had come up with, um, with Councillor Katarina, just some um, ideas at that time. And I said, that that's fine. Um, I'm going to let him run through that. Um, and one thing I want to say, these are proposals. Mm -hmm. So please, before anybody jumps up and starts yelling or getting okay. upset, understand that these are proposals. After he gives that proposal, um, if someone would like to speak, then we will take that. Um, we will not go over a half an hour period of time, so please keep that in mind. We will try to keep it under three minutes for people that do talk. Um, one thing I've said when we started the ordinance again this year was that I do think it's important that we hear from people, um, and so that's why we're doing it this way. So I'm going to turn the floor over. here. Yeah, Can of I course. just add yes. one thing? Um, just so people understand, Ed and I are polar opposites on this whole issue with the parking at Higgins Beach, isn't that correct, Council yes, Blaze? Yes. So he and I uh, had coffee one day and said, all right, this is where I'm coming from, where are you coming from? And we talked for a good long time and pounded out ideas, again, these are just proposals, they're ideas for a starting point for conversation about what may or may not happen at Higgins Beach. Um, if Ed and I, coming from polar opposites, can do that, then we're hopeful that we can uh, mm -hmm. get people from the community to also take a look at, don't start right out going, no, I'm not going to listen right. to anything, to heck with you, because that doesn't right. work real well. Uh, so if Ed and I can do that, everybody can. Right. I just want to let you know. Right, Ed? Right. Okay, go. And the, way, the, the, the two things I want to say, too, uh, to follow up on what Jean Marie said is, that's the kind of community that we want to have, is that even though we don't agree on certain things, we still can find a solution. That's the kind of community that we should be living in. Um, the second thing is, Ed's proposal that is coming forward today will not be voted on today. Right. This is a starting point for us. After his proposal and after this meeting, Ed and I will meet. Jean and Ed will meet. We cannot meet three together unless it's in the public, and we will try to hammer out some things because I know what came out of our group meetings and what some people will be okay with and what some people won't be okay with. Um, so that being said, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, as Jean Marie did say, that we were total opposites. We have been ever since Jean Marie came on to but No. We get along great, <laughs> and we did. We we sat down after after this was initially defeated, and and uh, started throwing ideas around, and we came up with a whole bunch of different ideas, and, and that's primarily what I want to do today is just quickly go through them. There's, <coughs> there's eight proposals here. Uh, the committee that were uh, that 
Kate had formed has already seen this. At least I'm, I'm hoping they have seen it because I, I did send it to them all. So. Okay. Um, so let me just go through it item by item. Uh, the first item is no change in the present location of the parking. One hour limit for each space, exact dates to be determined. For example, one hour parking during the busy se season, uh, roughly April through October, and maybe unlimited parking during the off season, November through March. Implement paid parking using a multi-space <coughs> meter system. Uh, off season use of meters to be determined. Um, replace three spaces with two additional handicap spaces and a fi official use space. And also maybe consider a senior space only, which would be accessed through a beach pass. Um, the drop-off space at Ashton Street, uh, we'd like to see slightly expanded. And the purpose of that is to alleviate uh, congestion at the drop-off space at Pearl Street. Um, we're suggesting that we change the time allowed for parking down there to 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the reason for that is because of there's a no noise ordinance in this town that says you can't have any noise, excessive noise, prior to 7 a.m. in the morning. And it's felt that some of the noise, there is a lot of noise down there prior to 7 a.m. Uh, Year-round meter made style enforcement, um, suppl supplementing the bike cops. Right now, the bicycle cops are the ones that are monitoring the, the park at one hour parking down there, and it's, that's not a good use of a bicycle cop, marking tires or keeping track of cars. And uh, meter parking would be so much easier to take care of. Plus, meter parking provides revenue to the town. Um, we're proposing some sort of signage uh, prohibiting the changing of clothes <coughs> on any street at Higgins Beach. And the last item is Morning Street to Vesper Street, which is non-parking in the summertime, but allowable in the wintertime. Um, we're just considering if we do have metering down there, should we have metering for those cars in the wintertime if we have them for the other spaces. And that's it. <coughs> and what we'd like to do is um, we can make this available to anybody. Uh, and we'll be working on it ourselves in the next month, and we hope that you people come forward with other ideas. Um, like Jean Marie said and, and Kate said, this is a start, but uh, it's a start. We feel in the right direction. And that's it. Thank you. Yep. Jean Marie. Um, if I could just add one thing, I will tell you nothing is going to change this year. This isn't going to happen this year. This is going to be a process. So. Um, this is a starting point. As Ed said, you know, we'll make copies available to anyone who wants to look at this. Um, email us. I've already gotten some emails. Some people have had some great ideas um, about things we can do down at Higgins Beach. Um, and we would like to make this, uh, again, something that the community can work together that's acceptable to the m greatest number of people. Not everyone's going to be happy. It's just the way it is. Uh, when you come to situations like this, but everyone needs to work together uh, to make it the best situation we can for the most number of people. The biggest thing to remember, though, and I want to emphasize because I know there's been a lot of concern about it, is it, when it's not busy, when it's not the height of the season on Higgins Beach, I'm not looking to charge people for parking or, or put limitations. This is just to help with the time um, and the people at Higgins Beach have told us busiest times usually May through October, particularly if we have a really nice fall. So that please keep that in mind because I have had a lot of people freaking out. They're going to charge for parking uh, in the off season, and I have I personally have no intention of doing that. So 
And that's it for me. Okay. <coughs> Anybody want to speak on this? <clears throat> if you do, can you line up at the podium? They need your um, name and address. Go ahead. Uh, my name's Diane Milholland. I live at 52 Ocean Ave at Higgins Beach. And uh, my concern, along with safety, of course, is people disrobing in front of the world. First of all, I'm quite sure it's not legal to just rip your clothes off any way you want in public. And I think when we have a policeman down there, they should do something to enforce that. I have a nine-year-old granddaughter who will be living at the beach come fall. And believe me, I don't want her exposed to that type of thing. <coughs> it's very aggravating. And as far as putting signage up, if they won't listen to verbal concerns of please don't do that, what makes you think they're going to read a sign and obey that? They're not. They're very, very one-minded. They're tunnel-visioned into what they want to do, and that's it. The heck with anybody who disagrees with them. And that's my feeling. Not all of them are like that, but a, just a few. That's all it takes to throw the whole thing off. I think the council has to remember, that's not just a vacation place. I myself and many others live there year round, and we are affected by their behavior year round. And it's not fair. We pay a heck of a lot in taxes down there. We should have more say in what goes on in our neighborhood. Thank you. Pamela Rosner for King Street. I can understand what this woman is talking about. However, on Pine Point Beach, we have an old man. He's old. He wears a man thong. You can see all of his butt, and you can see half of what's in front. And it's really unattractive. How are you going to stop people from doing this? You can't. It's the beach. You see people come out of the water and their bathing suit falls off for whatever reason. You can't stop this stuff. And to try to be the moral police is just inappropriate at the beach. It's not going to stop no matter what. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Bombacci, 22 Baby Avenue. Um, I thought since so many people are here, it might be a good opportunity to do a little recap of where we've been, and I promise not to take more than three minutes. Um, several months ago, a group of us came before the Ordinance Committee uh, to help get some help solving the behavior problem on Bayview Avenue. The problem started when the one-hour parking ordinance passed. At that time, the town promised us that it would be short-term parking designed for those who wanted to take a walk on the beach have lunch in the car, uh, maybe take a swim. Since then, people in wetsuits are out surfing for hours at a time, abusing the one-hour time limit, and then taking over the sidewalk when they come out. But there's more. Starting at 5 and continuing until the middle of the morning, when the bike cop arrives, the beeping and slamming of car doors and trunks as people park in front of homes along Bayview, and it's very disruptive to the families. The noise before 7 o'clock, that is. So that's why we're asking for the 7 o'clock time period. Then there's the dressing and the undressing, or more accurately, the putting on the wetsuit, the taking off the wetsuit, and the dancing with the towels, hoping it won't drop. Um, and then the large plastic containers of water they put in the street, to uh, rinse off, and the loading and unloading of equipment, i.e. surfboards that block the sidewalk, then there's tailgating and public urination. And <coughs> last night, I was just putting together these comments for the meeting. I looked out the window. I stopped because I was tired. And I looked out the window, and this is what I saw. I'm not talking. Last night. So let me ask you this. Would you want your neighborhood to be used as a locker room? 
I just want to be clear that he's he's rinsing his feet. Okay. Just this big uh, storage bucket to discuss there. As a result of this situation, more and more people are walking in the street. This is a safety <coughs> issue in spite of what other people say because the cars are stopping, they're backing up, they're speeding, and then these people are walking in the street while other cars are trying to get by all this. And some say there's no problem, that we're a minority, that we knew what we were getting into when we bought our homes. Now most, that isn't true. Most of us have lived here for, for a lot of years and many for generations. You've hit three minutes, so if you don't, if you could wrap up, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the majority of Higgins Beach residents <coughs> believe this should not be happening in our neighborhood, especially since the town has provided convenient facilities for parking, showering, and changing. We asked for handicapped and official use spaces first, then we went to senior citizen spaces, and those went nowhere. So now we're hoping that Councilors Blaze and Katarina's proposal will be something we can all work with. And um, think of how many more people could use those spaces if they turned over every hour. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Betsy Siebert, 24 um, Bayview Ave. Um, I have a lot of things I want to say, so it's going to take more than three minutes, so I'm going to try to keep it really short. I just want to reiterate um, my neighbor um, that if you're not there on Bayview, you don't, maybe you don't see all of this every day, but I have children, <coughs> they're not here, but we've seen a lot of people disrobe that we don't necessarily want to see disrobe. Um, I understand that I'm not the moral pr police, and if I ask people to stop, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I also see people surfing when they're not supposed to be surfing, people putting stuff on the fence that we're using to try to protect the primary dune. We have a lot of... Uh, observation that we have to do, but also a lot, we have to tell people what to do all the time because nobody reads the signs. So when we tell people that they shouldn't park there more than an hour or they shouldn't disrobe, they act like they, well, I didn't know that. So I, my concern about your proposal is that enforcement. I, I love all of your ideas, but who's going to enforce them? Uh, Seven o'clock in the morning, if somebody's making noise before, then what, do we have to call the police every morning if somebody's making noise? Um, and is that really going to be effective? Are they going to get there in enough time? Because certainly when we go down and ask people to not make noise, they still make noise. Um, we don't really have a lot of authority, but we are right there and we are witnessing all of this. So <coughs> I just want to make sure that you realize that there's a lot of safety issues. I can't get out of our driveway because of the extended uh, green space that you have for I believe is drop-off area. My question would be if you're going to add that to Ashton, I think that's a great idea, but will that mean that ours will be smaller or shorter so that I can get out of the driveway without having to make a three-point turn because there's always someone parked in the green space? It, those people stay there for a very long time. I, my understanding is it's supposed to be a quick turnover. That's not what's happening. Is the green space cutting into your driveway? No, 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 it's across from my driveway, but I can't get out of oh, my driveway and turn. Oh, sorry. You know what I'm saying? Yes, if there's I do. a car parked there, we can't do that. Okay. Um, so that doesn't seem safe right. to me. So we're all, all, lots of times we have to ask people to move so that we can mm. get out of our driveway. But they're not supposed to be parked there anywhere. No. But, but they're obviously not reading the signs. That's my concern. If we just do signage, we have signage all over the fences and people still climb through that area. They hang <laughs> things on the fence. So I'm not sure that signs are the answer. I understand the frustration because I'm not sure exactly how to, um, I, I'm not sure how you enforce it. But maybe somebody walking along who's a meter person, maybe that would help if there's somebody down there all the time. I don't know. But that's my concern is that your proposals are great. <coughs> I just don't know how we will enforce them. Thank you. Next. Um, hi, my name is Sue Farrar and I own a place on Pearl up by Greenwood, 24 Pearl. Um, I just, this is the first time I've been able to attend because I live out in Washington, but I have been coming to Higgins Beach for 50 years, like many people here, or probably some people more. Um, I don't have beachfront property, but I am, because I walk up and down Pearl Street, surprised at how much noise comes from those spaces. 
and how much disruption comes from those spaces, including sometimes a <laughs> little bit of road rage that happens when people can't get out because of all the, you know, the unloading and all that. And um, but a couple things. I'm main thing I'm concerned about is the environmental issue. Yesterday I was walking on the beach with my son, and there was a huge um, spot of gasoline. And I mean I've seen this occasionally from maybe motorboats offshore. Um, but this was large, and it was kind of right by that ash between Ashton and Pearl. And I can't help thinking that with all the cars parking on Bayview, that you know every car, a lot of cars drip gasoline, oil, various things. Even a few little drips, if you add that up to I don't know how many cars turn over in an hour. I guess I could do the math. Anybody here could. But it's a lot of gas that can add up quickly to a gallon that goes right downhill onto the ocean. And there's a lot of things that we're all trying to preserve. Um, we're proud of our Higgins Beach, as we are Pine Point and some of the other beaches. Um, so I'm concerned about that. Um, the traffic issue, the safety. I personally don't walk on the sidewalk. I always walk on the side. I walk on the west side of Bayview because of the fact that I don't want to get clubbed with a surfboard or anything like that. So I don't care about walking in the street personally. I'm not concerned that I'm going to get run over. And I like walking on the street in Higgins Beach, so maybe I'll be arrested by the additional cough, which I'm also concerned about more policing. We have a bike cop that sits on the, you know, half of the time sits at the end of Pearl Street and watches us, and it feels a little over-policed to me already with one bicycle cop, so hearing about a meter maid makes, my, makes me just go, what? I mean, really? <laughs> um, the other thing is meters, I'm just not doesn't sound like a great idea, but I'm trying not to jump up and down and get crazy about it, but it's a beautiful rural beach. Do we really want meters there? I mean, first of all, I heard our taxes going up, and I almost fell over the other day when I heard that. I have an acre in Washington with a much larger home, and I pay much less tax, and we don't even have state income tax, so I'm not really sure where all the money's going, but I'm not really sure we need meters on top of that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Anybody else? Uh, Robert Rovner, uh, 14th Street. Oh, the agenda that I heard today is, isn't anything different, really, than what we heard months ago when we were here. I have two concerns. One is one of the things that Mr. Blaze mentioned about adding more handicapped spots. Does that mean you're also going to accommodate those handicapped that come with wheelchairs, whether they come out of the trunk of a car or in a van that's adapted? And then you're going to put in handicapped ramps so those people can access the beach more easily. That was not addressed. And then my biggest concern is more ethical than anything else. Um, we have two members of the council that live in Higgins Beach. The, um, the, the thoughts brought forward to this ordinance committee both times today and the previous time are mostly engineered uh, through the Higgins Beach Association, which I believe both those members of the council belong. And uh, because the situation is so, I don't know, volatile, uh, and there's so many aggravated people, um, it's, I believe, in the best interest of this town that both, both of those councilors recruit themselves from this discussion uh, in order to give it the most fair and balanced um, presentation to the public. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Seth Fernal, 45 Maple Avenue, Scarborough. Uh, I don't surf. I stop by the beach. Uh, I haven't actually been to Higgins Beach in a while. It's been a little tumultuous lately. But I go there with my, when I do the go there, I have a four month old child. We have able to get out of the car, use the stroller, get to the beach easy without parking spots. Uh, I don't think that changing out of a wetsuit is a moral problem. I think if you're flashing somebody, that might be a moral problem. I just hate to see so much change happen in effect and limit the use of so many people based on people who are just flat out breaking the law. If people are urinating in the bushes, I, I don't agree with that. I think that's illegal. Uh, just as a bit, you know, if a you know, one if a one-year-old does it, people seem to think that's okay, and then they think 20-year-olds can do it and that's okay. I don't agree with that. Um, I just hate to see the, just the, the actions of a few affect the use of so many. So to say that the nudity and public urination should eliminate parking there or, or 
just restrict parking in any sense for everybody who uses it. It's just a slippery slope of, uh, that I, sh I don't agree with, and I just like to see make sure that those who are breaking the law aren't affecting it for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Dave Fillinger. I live at 10 Pearl Street. I, uh, I'm a year-round resident, so I'm there 365 days a year at 6 a.m. 365 <laughs> days a year. And there is no parking problem at 6 to 7 a.m. There's no noise problem from 6 to 7 a.m. If the, the busy season at, at Higgins Beach is six weeks, starts about in about a week, ends at the third week of August. So we're creating a problem where there is none. And I think <coughs> to be inclusive, to exclude people from six to seven, that's the people that work in town. They mm -hmm. come to go to, to surf, to walk, to fish before they go to work. They're not screaming and making noises. So I'm not saying there's never been a noise. It might be me yelling for my dog. But I find it offensive. I live down at big, we have a beautiful place to live. I think we can include everybody in town. I just find it really offensive that we keep going back to this. We defeated this several months ago, and now there's a new one again. And like, how many times do we have to say, don't change it, move on to something else, please? Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Ted Reserve, 25 Houghton Street. Uh, I'd like to address it from a bigger issue. We have uh, essentially three beach areas in, the, in Scarborough. You got Black Point, uh, Crouch Neck, that is one. You got uh, uh, Pine Point and Higgins Beach. Now, my concern is you don't treat them all the same. Why is it Pillsbury Drive, which is a much wider street, the homes are further back from the road than they are at, uh, on Bayview, and it says no parking on that street, and there's access down to the beaches. And furthermore, on top of that, what that sign says, it says emergency stopping only. Does that mean you can't stop to let somebody off to walk down to the beach? I'm concerned. I think that's treating one community a little bit different than the other. And the same thing can be said about up on Prouch Neck. You know, you had a beautiful marginal way there. It was a very public place where people should be allowed to walk. Well, where do you park? You got no parking up there. Well, you have one that's very similar to what we, Higgins Beach uh, Inn pays $5,000 for. It's right in front of the uh, simulated post office in that little uh, store that sells stuff. And that's no parking. Furthermore, even in the wintertime, they're allowed to put a cable across so people can't go up there in the wintertime to sit and look over, you know, and watch the sunset or watch the, uh, the uh, surface, the parasail surface. Uh, over at Pine Point. I mean, I would think that if you want to address this, let's try to make it equal. You know, if you can pack down, in, uh, down on uh, uh, in Higgins Beach, why can't you pack on Pillsbury Drive? And why isn't there parking up on uh, um, Prouch Neck to sit there and look across at the, uh, the bay? That road is plenty wide enough to put parking on one side. I only ask you to treat all the communities the same. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sue Foley Ferguson, um, and I'm on Black Point Road, 331 Black Point Road. And I just want to be on the public record that, you know, um, there's a lot of uh, people who come forward and say, you know, most of the Higgins Beach Association approves this or that. I, th I think it needs to be noted that, that the leaders of the Higgins Beach Association are not elected by the membership of the Higgins Beach Association. Um, and it's not a, a, a completely transparent type of situation. So just so that the council is aware that they really don't represent all of the citizens at that beach and that there are a ton of people who feel like the gentleman uh, just one, one back who said that they really don't think there's a problem. I think my issue really here is with the town process. And this has been going on since I've been on the council in 96. We've been dealing with Higgins Beach stuff. We had huge problems. And whittling away at the rights for people that don't live at the beach to have access to the beach. Now, make no mistake, this is not about behavior. I'll talk about that. This, the objective here for the landowners there is to eliminate the parking. That's the objective, and I'll talk about that in a second. But if you folks as the town uh, council that are elected make any kind of change, 
and I, and I kind of agree with the gentleman who just spoke about sort of treating all communities the same and that sort of thing. So I'm not against looking at, you know, issues that are, are real, like, you know, the drop-offs can be a problem for somebody's driveway, you know, that those things. But the big issues, are there any? The chief of police apparently says they're not. We've already talked about that, but we have a few people that year after year after year um, say it. And if you make any changes right now here and start even working towards this, you're acknowledging that this behavior is inappropriate for a beach. And actually, it is not illegal in the state of Maine to go topless. And I don't know if people realize that. And we've talked about this, but taking off a wetsuit is not inappropriate for a beach community, and neither is washing feet. Now, some people may disagree with me. However, that is not something a government should get into in, in terms of what is appropriate. Um, it's not illegal. It's not uh, inappropriate. You see more butt cracks from plumbers and, 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 and public works folks than you do at the beach. And you see, uh, like people said, thongs from people walking down the street. I'm sorry, this is just not, you know, and every community does have, I understand these are neighborhoods, but every community has their own problems. You know, being on a busy street, I could give you all kinds of uh, of things. But as far as the, the um, I, I just believe that you guys are, the town council needs to say, are we? do we have a problem here? And if we do, then solve it. Do we not have a problem? Is behavior the problem? And I think you've already said that it's not. I I just wanted to show you some photos. Police car, um, of the police car parking, the animal control parking in a no parking zone. So you hit your three minutes, so we oh, okay. can wrap up when you can. Please. And, well, let me just, I'll, I'll just give you these. Service vehicles parking. There's no need to add parking. These folks park already in spots that are temporary and they do it um, when they need to. And it's appropriate for them to do it when they need to. But here's the, here's the Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. We have 30 minutes. Yeah, we're almost at, we're almost at 30 minutes. Maureen Burns, 6 Morning Street, Higgins Beach. I live right on the beach. And, okay, I'll start with my little speech here. The main complaint is the removal of wetsuits on Bayview Ave at Higgins. Not wearing, but the removal. That is not illegal and by most standards not offensive. <coughs> and I might add, it has been stated by the complainant that this behavior is done by a few and is infrequent. Even when a towel inadvertently slips and look, look the other way. We live in a beach community. I'm sure these individuals that allow things to slip are not doing it to annoy anyone. They're just trying to get out of the wetsuit. Um, and then the question is, who defines what is appropriate or what's inappropriate? The law does. We have laws. So I don't think that that's an issue. None of the complaints have to do with everyday people parking on Bayview. Even if it's 100 people complaining compared to the population of Scarborough, which is just under 20,000. It is a few people who are annoyed by a few people's actions. Please do not change the frequent available on-street parking so that many other people that use it every day. It's just, I don't think it's fair. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna be our last, okay, you two are our last, no oh boy. No. <laughs> we hit the we hit the th we hit the half hour, and then some. So you two are our last <coughs> speakers, okay? You two. Tell them we'll take anything in email. You two are our last speakers. We'll take anything else in email, and we'll we will forward it out. I'm sorry, but we're way we're actually way over, and we also we still have another agenda item that we have some people really patiently waiting for. Um, so. You two can decide who's going to go, but I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay. Glennis Chabot, Houghton Street. Um, the first thing I want to um, comment on is uh, the Higgins Beach Association Board of Directors are elected by the membership. 
so that is was misstated. Um, also, getting out of the wetsuit is not the issue. Um, it's getting out of the wet bathing suit, getting out of the wet underwear that is the issue. You do not see that at most beaches. I've been to a lot of beaches all up and down the East Coast. You do not see people getting taking their bathing suits off to put on their street clothes or taking their underwear, wet underwear off to put on their street clothes. That is behavior issue. Also, the official parking space um, is needed, and it's not necessarily needed in those parking spaces, but I coordinate the uh, town uh, beach monitors at Higgins, and um, I have a lot of volunteers who come from other towns or off beach and they need a place to park. And right now, we always have to park illegally somewhere. So that official parking space um, would be greatly appreciated somewhere at the beach. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi there, Douglas Lundy, 26 Town of Farm Road. Yeah, I just want to reiterate a few points here. Um, I've sent some emails in. I hope all the proposals from everybody who have been emailing you guys are going to be considered, not just the one proposal that's been uh, read out today. Because there's a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of solutions. And I think they should all be considered. Uh, parking in general. We've seen it, the, the general park it being closed down over the years. Um, it's been whittled down just now to just 11 spaces and the intention of, of some people is to have absolutely zero parking at all. They've said so publicly um, and we're witnessing that. Uh, please don't take any more parking away from us. Uh, the residents of Scarborough enjoy using those spaces and it makes it very convenient for going to the beach and we need more parking, not less. Handicap spots. Yes, great idea. We've got two of them already, fully compliant with the ADA. ADA. Um, if you speak to the actual people, the actual handicapped people who use them, which I have, they maintain that they do have absolutely no problem at all parking there. The one problem that they do have is innocent people parking in the handicapped bays. Um, that, that happens. Uh, I've witnessed it myself. I've gone up to the person to explain, hey, you're in a handicapped spot. They had no idea it was there. Why didn't they know? Because the signage. The signage is end on. The actual physical sign is not in the middle of the bay where you would expect it to be. <coughs> the actual white wheelchair logo in the handicap space is very hard to see if it's covered in sand, snow, ice in the winter. You just can't see the handicapped bay. They park there by mistake. Let's paint the whole thing blue and have a white logo in the, in the middle like they do at Walmart or any big chain store. Uh, makes it a lot easier to see. That's the issue, is people parking there by mistake. Um, proposed emergency vehicle zone. I think that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in, in my life. <coughs> it's, it's completely unnecessary. I've seen tr the trash truck pick up the bins on a regular basis. They have absolutely no problem parking there at all. I've seen the two big, uh, huge big trucks that are parked there for seaweed collection. They, they have absolutely no uh, problem parking there at all. And the school bus has no problem getting past those trucks in the morning. I witness this every Thursday morning um, when the seaweed is being collected. Um, if people want to, if emergency vehicles or want to park there, they park wherever they like. If you really need a, a, a piping clover monitors parking bay, they could go and park in the parking lot like everybody else and just walk down the, the one block down to the beach. Or we can designate a, a special area right down the other end where the piping clovers are. There's, they could probably park on the road, some special concession by the council, mark off a little bay, they can park there. No problem at all. Um, the drop-off zones, I think that's a... Pr Time. Is it time? I'll, I'll just wrap know, up. Close by quick. <clears throat> Let me just cover the, the wetsuits. We live in Maine. We don't live in Florida. Unfortunately, the ocean is cold here and you've got to wet, wear a wetsuit. If you're going to witness somebody climbing out their car, they can be in a bikini and put a wetsuit on. Go surfing. I won't be putting on the bikini myself. But uh, you can witness, witness them surfing. They come back again. 
and they've got to take the wetsuit off. So they get out of the car in a bikini, put a wetsuit on because it's cold, you don't arrest them. They come back in again because you've got an ordinance now, they get arrested because they're taking their wetsuit off to get back into the car. It's ridiculous. And, you know, to most people, a towel around the waist has been perfectly acceptable for the last 75 years. I can show you pictures of when it wasn't acceptable, and I can show you pictures of little beach huts down where you can change. If we want to go back to that, all be it. I'm, I'll have to move out of Higgins Beach, well, the Higgins Beach area. But, sorry, I'll, I'll wrap up there. Thank you. Thank you. One thing I want to point out real quick, too, is that um, in, our, in our last meeting, well, we only had two meetings, we did have um, the police chief there. And we did go over a lot of the complaints and a lot of the pictures, and he was very clear that nothing that was being done was illegal. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it doesn't, I'm not saying that makes it right. I just want to be very clear that we did get um, the opinion of the, of the police chief to make sure that we weren't missing anything, um, and he did say that nothing that we were reporting or showing was doing anything illegal at that time down there. Um, I also want to say that what we'll do is, is take the comments that we got today. Um, we do have a couple other proposals. If you have ideas, please try to email them to us within the next week. Um, we'll meet and try to get through some of this and hopefully have a proposal uh, at next month's meeting. Is there anything you want to add? No, Tom? Is there anything you want to nope. No, I just want to thank everyone for their input and just remind everyone it's a process. Mm -hmm. And then it gets, I get a little like, when I hear this, those people and those people, well, we're all people, and right. so let's see what we can do here. Right. And I know, I, I, I know a lot of people that would be really thrilled to live in Higgins Beach. I am one of them. My children are another one. Um, and so I think there's a way to make the Higgins Beach just as wonderful as some of the other beach communities that are out there and not as contentious and bring people together. I, I still tr really, truly believe that. So that's what we're going to try to do. So please, if you have information that you want to get to us, try to get it to us within the week. Um, and then we will be discussing um, another proposal at next month's meeting. Um, let's take a two-minute break for any of you that are going to leave before we discuss fireworks. <coughs> um, then you can, if you're just here for the Higgins Beach discussion. Why don't you just take that one? Okay. Um, I didn't want everybody getting up and leaving while we're trying to talk to people.
Uh, moving on to item number six is discussion on fireworks. Uh, I'm going to actually open this. I know we have someone here that has traveled quite a distance to talk about this. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, a little bit of back history here about the fireworks. <coughs> I <coughs> had gotten last year at the end of my term some um, pretty substantial complaints about fireworks. Um, most of those complaints were from people that were in small areas, meaning they were small lot sizes, where a lot of our newer neighborhoods, they have three plus acres. We're talking about some of our beach communities and some of our, our older houses are on very small lots. And the houses are literally, I mean, you could open up your window and stick your hand out and wave to your next door neighbor. Um, that's how close some of these houses are. So the one that really struck me was from, and I promised her I would not use her name, was from a firefighter who actually lives in one of these neighborhoods. And she says that literally every 4th of July she sits on her back porch and she's petrified, waiting for someone's house to catch on fire because up go the fireworks on top of these little houses and it's raining down on top of people's um, roofs. Last year I said we would talk about the fireworks. This year we finally have room for it on our agenda and I think it's important. That being said, I in no way, um, because this came up and I got numerous emails, um, I in no way want to take fireworks completely away from people and I do not want to do anything that harms the two fireworks establishments that we have in this town because business we need business in this town. That's, that's it's very valuable to us right now. So nothing I want to do would be to alienate that. My concern is these homes that are very close together and what could possibly happen. So that is a little bit of the, of briefly, um, some of the backstory as to why I wanted to bring this forward. When we had it on last month's agenda, Jean Marie and I had a discussion there was a couple bills, at mm -hmm. least in the legislature, four, four, four or five, five yeah. bills in the legislature that talk about fireworks. At that time, we had were under the assumption that by this meeting, it would already be a done deal at the legislature, which means we could then pretty much start talking about it at the town level and write an ordinance the way that we saw fit. When I went through the ordinance um, and a couple times, the biggest problem that I saw with it was the restrictions and where fireworks can be let off. And that was really my concern. Can you be a little more specific well, what, what your thoughts were? Um, <coughs> there's really not anything in here about the size of the area where these can be let off. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, like what size? Right. Or? And I know, city. and you know, it gets, like, <coughs> Tom and I did discuss this, because I did go to Tom about it, and it gets very tricky. Um, you know, are you going to send a police officer out there, and is he going to take a, is he going to measure someone's lot? I mean, you, it gets a little bit tricky when you start talking about restricting lot sizes, and who's going to be able to do it, and um, so I, I'm very aware of that, but I'm still, I, I'm still concerned about it. And any time a constituent brings forward um, something that has documented proof and someone who's in the business of fire, I think it's important to bring it to the public's attention and to bring it forth in this setting. Mm -hmm. That is why I asked for it to be on the agenda. How do you, you guys, input um, from you guys? Yeah, um, I can update you on the legislature. Yes. Legislature basically killed everything uh, that was up there to do with fireworks. I know one of them that was of interest to me because I know it's an issue for people in town is when people set off fireworks, they go up in the air and then they fall all over everybody's and there's, and it, there's no, unless you want to go under the litter ordinance, I suppose, you know, right. uh, how do you control that happening? Uh, and there was a, a bill up there to that and it, and it didn't make it through. Um, I, I know from my own personal point of view, I am not a fan of fireworks. I never have been as a kid. I'm one of these people when it thunders and lightnings, I just don't go hide under my bed. So 
fireworks are not my favorite thing um, from a noise point of view. I also have concerns from a viewpoint of veterans uh, with PTSD. I mean, that's a real issue for people with PTSD, sudden noises and light and flash and whatever. However, and yeah, and I've talked to several people yeah. personally that I, whom I know veterans who, who do suffer with PTSD, um, for whom you know it's it's a it's not good. However, that being said, I know that Scarborough in the past worked really hard to try to have a balance because we do have um, businesses in town who sell fireworks, and I'm I'm not looking to ban the sale of fireworks, and I don't think I even want to really ban the use of them. But it may be helpful to explore, does it make any sense to have something like if you set off fireworks and you best pick up after yourself, maybe, is one. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to look at the times and do we want to look at, um, I guess the best way to do it is, the only way, I, and again, this is my real estate thing, is, is zones. Because we have residential zones that are different lot size zones that would be easier to enforce. Force if you were to go that way, I'm not saying we should, right. but um, to do with density. Right. But uh, my, on the other side of that mm. is, um, do we really want to stir that pot right, right now? Yeah. And it doesn't make sense. So yeah. anyway, that's me. You? Um, I live in one of those communities that's really, really small, and I have awoken several times on July 5th and found debris on my roof. Mm. Um, of course it goes away, the wind blows and it goes away. Right. Um, I think just bringing this up and maybe putting it on our agenda for next month to try to get some feedback from uh, people in town as to is, is there really a problem or are these just isolated issues? Um, before we uh, decide to make any major mm. changes. Mm. Um, I think in, in small communities it is a potential problem. Um, I think what, one of the problems in the beach communities is that, like Higgins Beach, the, the lot sizes are 50 by 100. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the ordinance says you can't set off fireworks on the beach. Right. It's got to be on your property or the property that you're renting and stuff right. and so forth. So. They always but used to set them off. I see people set well, them off I down there. But they're, but they're doing people it. People break the law all the time. <laughs> you think? <laughs> We've seen that. <laughs> um, would, so. you, uh, would you like a few minutes? Do you have anything that you would like to uh, add? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Please, go ahead. <coughs> We do just need your name and... Sure. My name is Jeff Graham. I'm the general manager over at uh, Phantom Fireworks in Scarborough over by Cabela's. Um, thank you for having us in the community, by the way. We love what we do over there. I just want to reiterate, every customer that comes in through my store, that comes out, there's a safety flyer given to every mm -hmm. single customer, Fruit. every single purchase. All right? There's also, for Maine laws, respect your community, respect your neighbors. Mm -hmm. We, as the leader of the industry, promote this. It is safety first. The moment you walk into my showroom, there's a huge safety tables. How to put the fireworks, you know, put blocks around them, how to secure them. Safety first always. You know, Fourth of July is an American tradition. You know, John Adams stated it the moment <coughs> that we became a country. And we would love to be able just just the few days of the year, you know, allow our customers and everybody just to support and celebrate our holidays. So, but if anybody has any questions uh, ever, please come down to my store. I am there to ask anything, uh, safety, events, whatever it may be. We are part of the community and we want to be a part of it. So please, use my stupid use of knowledge. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so besides that, any questions, I'm happy to. Like I said, answer at any time. So, but if anyone, like I said, wants to see what we give out, every single bag that goes out of our store has all these safety flyers. Can you leave that with? Oh, that's absolutely a product for everybody. So, thank you. Can I ask you? Do you sure. talk to people, or is it mentioned in those flyers? And I'll look about PTSD issues because I know I saw something online about some community or someone was handing out signs so that people, vets, could put them on their lawns saying, they you know, can't. I mean, that is, like I said, there is that issue, but I want to, like I said, honestly, 
It's, Thank you. I've never had That's somebody, true. I've had guys from the military come in, and it's also you say PTSD. But we also have guys from the military coming in. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, we just got back from Iraq. We want to celebrate. Right, oh, yeah, you know, oh, I know. One of my biggest spenders this year, a gentleman just came back, and it was his birthday, and it's all he wanted. Yes. And uh, literally, the guy made my day. Yeah. He almost had tears in my eyes, telling me everything, and it was, it was amazing, you know. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, for a few days of the year, we really appreciate it. Can we ask questions? Sure. Sure. Question. Have you done any studies telling how many people from our state buy fireworks and how many people from the community area buy fireworks? As a study, uh, we do actually have the numbers available for our corporate, yes. Everybody does a sign-in coming through that. Um, will the company release it? That's something we have to talk about. But uh, yes, every person that comes through our door does sign a liability waiver saying they will not harm anybody with the use of our fireworks. Because I'm concerned about what we see in last time in the beach area, and especially in the Chicago area, people come from other states and let put things off on the beach. And that does a number on the birth I got to tell you. Okay, we so actually... As you come in, we do have the restrictions list at the front of our showroom. If they ask, it's, you know, main job sales, <coughs> fire marshal's office, under fireworks. Uh, we give that to every customer who asks uh, where they're going to do it. We tell them to respectfully look where they're going to fire it off and check before lighting. We do do this for anybody at ask. We are, like I said, trying to do the right thing at all times. Yeah, and personally, from my point of view, it sounds like you're doing your job. Um, the problem is, like many other things that we've discussed, there are always a few out there that don't follow the rules and get in trouble for that. Um, but I think, like Ed said, this is something that we can kind of look at. Um, we'll hopefully get some more community feedback, um, and we'll kind of go from there. Plus, yes. we have the 4th of July coming up between yes. I know. the next so. Right. So... You're probably going to have a couple of good weeks. Fireworks.com. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a thing in the park with elves and metal? Okay. Good question. We literally, this week, just developed it. We do have new wooden handle parkers. As of this, I just received them in stock three days ago. They're on my shelf. They're ready to go. Some more burn here. Yeah, you're right. You're um, we, have, we actually have one more question for you. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yes. Uh, and I know the town is also worried about the fireworks that go on in town on the 4th of July with the fire display, mm -hmm. where they have people with uh, buckets of water to help preserve them artificial turf so we don't burn it. Mm -hmm. right. And there was one year that it was a, mm -hmm. almost a problem. If that's the town's concern, what do we do about the people that we let just let them go in a small right. community like Stevens or other ones that have been mentioned yep. on you know, putting out these neighborhoods <coughs> that come down if the wind is going into mm -hmm. those neighborhoods. Right. Yeah, you know, do we point. have anything in the books or something to if you're going to set up fireworks, then yeah. you need to have uh, the town know so that the, maybe somebody can uh. help prevent fires. Is that I, I live in rural Scarborough. I live on the other side of town in North Scarborough on eight acres of land, but I have a neighbor who loves his fireworks, and he's not always legal in how he uses them. My and I, I agree, there, I have a concern when it's very dry fire conditions. My husband's uh, on the fire department, and I've called the police on my neighbor, and he knows it, and I've talked to him about it, too, about watching fire conditions, and that's something that we may want to look at, too, mm -hmm. is, you know, if fire conditions are such, because the state puts out, you know, fire days, you know, when you can have open burning and whatever, so, I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a good, good point. point. Yeah. I, I just want to draw just one thing, a, a distinction between display kind of commercial grade fireworks and consumer fireworks. I believe what... Right. What... Absolutely. The issue brought forward is consumer grade, consumer. meaning right. every day, you know, any of us can walk into uh, an establishment, buy these, and use That's these, good point. as opposed to a licensed professional right. pyrotechnics company, which uh, has a higher threshold and requirements associated with those right. those uh, events. You're right. That, yes. Okay, we'll take two more. Um, yeah, you were first. Go ahead. Where the fire fire department report on fires, the 
why it works. If there's any information. I'm sure there is information. Yeah. Like how fires were started mm -hmm. with the fireworks. Yeah, they of course they so would keep track of that. Somewhere? That is something we can get. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure. sure. I'll, I'll get it for you. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Absolutely. Yeah. We can get it. <coughs> Ma'am, go ahead. My question is, who picks up the debris? Yeah. Well, that's an issue. Well, that's part of the issue that we're we were going to talk about and try to figure out. Uh, do you say anything to the people when they buy it? Pick up what's left. Yes, we do. We actually tell them to water the water product down afterwards to make sure it does not relight, rekindle. And the big sense of our company is, like I said, see, we are the leaders. We do promote safety first. If you like it, uh, everything is there. We have it written out. We have pocket hoses sitting in front of the store saying, please have these items ready at all times. Well, we have the name of Hotel One here. No, it's so quiet. We don't know if it's anybody there. But last year was terrible. And what was left was bad. We do say, please respect you. Like I said, if you see our flyers up there, I just hand it down. Here's for me. Please respect your neighbors. By Cabela's. The big one, by Cabela's. Okay, good. Um, so I think what our plan is, is to uh, table this. Tracy will put it on next month's agenda. That's going into July, um, along with the Higgins Beach issue. Um, we'll put that on our agenda. And um, anyone who's listening or anyone that's still here, uh, we'll take feedback. We'll also get the fire department data and see what what they have to report on. And we'll get it actually probably for the whole town so that we have that information. Um, and then is there anything else pressing from either one of you that you'd want to see on the agenda? Just, just real quickly so yeah. the public will know what's the date of our next ordinance meeting. It's the July 21st. 21st. 9.30. 9.30. So Jean Marie will know. So. Yep. Okay. July 21st, 9.30. Um, probably what we'll do is we'll add a third item to our agenda list. I think it's, there's some financial things that I've been talking with Tom about um, that have to do with our senior citizens. And um, so there's a chance that I'm going to be able to get something on that agenda that covers that. But you may not hear about that for a week or two. So we'll see what we can do. Um, check the website, and it will be on there. Or you can email me. But give me a week. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We actually have one more speaker. Sue, go ahead. Um, Sue, if you could just give your name and address. Um, I, and I apologize. Sue, Sue actually should have spoken at the beginning, and I overlooked her. Go ahead. My name is Susan Hamill, and I live on Bay Street in Pine Point. And um, I had uh, put together um, an email, which I sent out to the, the um, all the counselors, regarding um, the possibility of creating an odor, um, a noxious odor, uh, nuisance odor ordinance. Um, and it's, it's come about because of um, some developments in Pine Point. Um, as you come down the Pine Point Road and go over the bridge, um, off to the right, as you're facing the beach, is a kind of a loading dock. Mm -hmm. And in there, there's some kind of a marijuana growing facility. and um, the odors that are coming out of that place um, have become quite noticeable, especially on the weekends. Um, and so we have that. And then we have um, the Ready Seafood um, facility that's uh, right next door to Clambake. And um, I understand that they are processing um, something like a million and a half pounds of lobster per year, uh, and they're growing. And um, there have been a, a number of times that uh, the smell of rotting lobster garbage is just overwhelming. And um, I understand that, that uh, they do get their trash picked up every day, or, yeah. but on occasion, um, something's gone wrong. And um, it's really become, um, it's just not what you, as you come over the bridge, you see the beach, you, you know, you want that smell of salt air. And, that's not what you're getting. That's quite the combination, marijuana yeah. and rotting lobster. 
And then the last um, um, <coughs> business is Bailey's Campground, which they've been in business and they've been in that same location forever. Yeah. And um, however, in the evening, if it's cool, um, everyone's got their little campfire, and I, they must have a, you know, light fires out at 10:30, and um, the smoke just is drifting, and um, for the people who live around there, it's really um, overwhelming. So I know that um, I did a little bit of research, and I know that there was a, a similar um, a marijuana growing facility mm -hmm. off the Pleasant Hill Road mm -hmm. that at one point had some issues, and I know the council mm -hmm. talked about maybe um, creating an ordinance, mm -hmm. and I think it's really time. Especially, we have now this overlay district, the mm -hmm. commercial down in Pine Point, and we need to address it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. And um, we'll talk more about it. Tom and I will talk more about it, and then we'll talk with the other counselors, and um, we'll get at least an answer to you. Okay? Thank you. Um, so that's it. Do I have a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? That's yep. it.